I think I'll start out and just talk a little bit about what exactly autism is. Autism is a very big continuum that goes from very severe, the child remains nonverbal, all the way up to brilliant scientists and engineers. And I actually feel at home here because there's a lot of autism genetics here. You wouldn't have any... Um... It's a continuum of traits. When does a nerd turn into, you know, a... Asperger, which is just mild autism. I mean, Einstein and Mozart and Tesla would all be probably diagnosed as uh, autistic spectrum today. And one of the things that really is going to concern me is getting these kids to, to be the ones that are going to invent the next energy things, you know, that Bill Gates talked about this morning. Okay, now if you want to understand autism animals, and I want to talk to you about different ways of thinking. You have to get away from verbal language. I think in pictures. I don't think in language. Now, the thing about the autistic mind is it attends to details. Okay, this is a test where you either have to pick out the big letters or pick out the little letters, and the autistic mind picks out the little letters more quickly. And the thing is, the normal brain ignores the details. Well, if you're building a bridge, details are pretty important because it'll fall down if you ignore the details. And one of my big concerns with a lot of policy things today is things are getting too abstract. People are getting away from doing hands-on stuff. I'm really concerned that a lot of the schools have taken out the hands-on classes because art and classes like that, those were the classes where I excelled. Okay, in my work with cattle, I noticed a lot of little things that most people don't notice would make the cattle block. Like, for example, this flag waving right in front of the veterinary facility. This feed yard was going to tear down their whole veterinary facility. All they needed to do was move the flag. Rapid movement, contrast. In the early 70s, when I started, I got right down in the chutes to see what cattle were seeing. People thought that was crazy. A coat on a fence would make them balk. Shadows would make them balk. A hose on the floor. People weren't noticing these things. A chain hanging down. And that's shown very, very nicely in the movie. In fact, I loved the movie, how they duplicated all my projects. That's the geek side. My drawings got the star in the movie, too. And actually, it's called Temple Grand and not Thinking in Pictures. So what is Thinking in Pictures? It's literally movies in your head. My mind works like Google for images. Now, when I was a young kid, I didn't know my thinking was different. I thought everybody thought in pictures. And then when I did my book, Thinking in Pictures, I started interviewing people about how they think. And I was shocked to find out that my thinking was quite different. Like if I say, think about a church steeple, most people get this sort of generalized, generic one. Now, maybe that's not true in this room, but it's going to be true in a whole lot of different places. I see only specific pictures. They flash up into my memory just like Google for pictures. And in the movie, they've got a great scene in there where the word shoe is said and a whole bunch of 50s and 60s shoes pop into my imagination. Okay, there's my childhood church. That's specific. There's some more, Fort Collins. Okay, how about famous ones? And they just kind of come up kind of like this, just really quickly, like Google for pictures. And they come up one at a time. And then I can think, well, okay, well, maybe we can have it snow or we can have a thunderstorm. I can hold it there and turn them into videos. Now, visual thinking was a tremendous asset in my work designing cattle handling facilities. And I've worked really hard on improving uh, how cattle are treated at the slaughter plant. I'm not going to go into any gucky slaughter slides. I've got that stuff up on YouTube if you want to look at it. But... One of the things that I was able to do in my design work is I could actually test run a piece of equipment in my mind, just like a virtual reality computer system. And this is an aerial view of a recreation of one of my projects that was used in the movie. That was like just so super cool. And there were a lot of kind of Asperger types and, and autism types working out there on the movie set too. But one of the things that really worries me is where's the younger version of those kids going today? They're not ending up in Silicon Valley where they belong. <laughs> now, one of the things I learned very early on, because I wasn't that social, is I had to sell my work and not myself. And the way I sold livestock jobs is I showed off my drawings, I showed off pictures of things. 
Another thing that helped me as a little kid is, boy, in the 50s, you were taught manners. You were taught you can't pull the merchandise off the shelves in the store and throw it around. Now, when kids get to be in third or fourth grade, you might see that this kid's going to be a visual thinker, drawing in perspective. Now, I want to emphasize that not every autistic kid's going to be a visual thinker. Now, I did the head this brain scan done several years ago, and I used to joke around about having a gigantic internet trunk line going deep into my visual cortex. This is tensor imaging, and my great big internet trunk line is twice as big as the controls. The red lines there are me, and the blue lines are the sex and age matched control. And there I got a gigantic one, and the control over there, the blue one, has got a really small one. And some of the research now is showing that people on the spectrum actually think with primary visual cortex. Now, the thing is, the visual thinker is just one kind of mind. You see, the autistic mind tends to be a specialist mind. Good at one thing, bad at something else. And where I was bad was algebra. And I was never allowed to take geometry or trig. Gigantic mistake. I'm finding a lot of kids that need to skip algebra, go right to geometry and trig. Now, another kind of mind is the pattern thinker more abstract. These are your engineers, your computer programmers. Now, this is pattern thinking. That praying mantis is made from a single sheet of paper. No scotch tape, no cuts, and there in the background is the pattern for folding it. Here are the types of thinking. Photorealistic visual thinkers like me. Pattern thinkers, music and math minds. Some of these oftentimes have problems with reading. You also will see these kind of problems with um, kids that are um, dyslexic you'll see these different kinds of minds. And then there's a verbal mind. They know every fact about everything. Now, another thing is the sensory issues. I was really concerned about having to wear this gadget on my face. And I, I came in half an hour beforehand so I could have it put on and, and kind of get used to it. And I, they got it bent so it's not hitting my chin. But sensory is an issue. Some kids are bothered by fluorescent lights. Others have problems with sound sensitivity. You know, um, it, it's going to be variable. Now, visual thinking gave me a whole lot of insight into the animal mind. Because think about it, an animal is a sensory-based thinker, not verbal. Thinks in pictures, thinks in sounds, thinks in smells. Think about how much information there is there on the local fire hydrant. He knows who's been there, <laughs> when they were there, are they friend or foe, is there anybody he can go mate with. There's a ton of information on that fire hydrant. It's all very detailed information. And looking at these kind of details gave me a lot of insight into animals. Now, the animal mind, and also my mind, puts sensory-based information into categories. Man on a horse and a man on the ground, that is viewed as two totally different things. You can have a horse that's been abused by a rider. They'll be absolutely fine with the veterinarian and with the horseshoer, but you can't ride them. You have another horse where maybe the horseshoer beat him up, and he'll be terrible for anything on the ground with the veterinarian, but um, a person can ride him. Cattle are the same way. Man on a horse, a man on foot, they're two different things. You see, it's a different picture. See, I want you to think about just how specific this is. Now, this ability to put information into categories, I find a lot of people are not very good at this. Like when I'm out troubleshooting with equipment or problems with something in a plant, they don't seem to be able to figure out, do I have a training people issue or do I have something wrong with the equipment? In other words, categorize equipment problem from a people problem. I find a lot of people have difficulty doing that. Now, let's say I figure out, is it an equipment problem? Is it a minor problem with something simple I can fix? Or is the whole design of the system wrong? People have a hard time figuring that out. Let's just look at something like, you know, solving problems with, you know, making airlines safer. Yeah, I'm a million-mile flyer. I do lots and lots of flying. And, um, you know, like if I was at the FFA, what would I be uh, doing a lot of direct observation of? It would be their airplane tails. You know, five fatal wrecks in the last 20 years. Tail either came off or steering stuff inside the tail broke in some way. It's tails, pure and simple. And when the pilots walk around the plane, guess what? They can't see that stuff inside the tail. You know, now as I think about that, I'm pulling up all of that, you know, specific information. It's specific. See, my thinking's bottom up. I take all the little pieces and I put the pieces together like a puzzle. Now, here's a horse that was deathly afraid of black cowboy hats. He'd been abused by somebody with a black cowboy hat. White cowboy hats, that was absolutely...